Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you why iteration works, how it calculates an estimate for a particular route. And I'll just take you back to the equation that we used in an earlier tutorial, x cubed minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. We saw that if we were to plot the graph y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1, those roots, those solutions to the equation would be found at the intersection with the x-axis where y was 0. And to form an iterative equation what we did was we made one of the x's from our equation the subject. And there were various ways of doing it. One of the many ways of doing it were by making this x the subject. We added 3x to both sides and then divided by 3 to give us x equals a third x cubed plus 1. So these solutions here, here and here would be exactly the same solutions that you'd get if you were to look at the intersections of the graphs y equals x and the graph y equals a third x cubed plus 1. I'll show you. I've got the graph here. So you'll see we've got the graph of y equals a third x cubed plus 1 and the graph of y equals x. And you can see the three intersections here. And if we were to project back these values onto the x-axis, you'll see that this one, this root, is very close to minus 2, as we had here. This one, close to 0.5, which would correspond to this value. And this one here, very close to the 1.5, which would correspond to this root. So we made up an iterative equation from this base equation here. And we took an approximation to the root. Do you remember we took our first approximation x1, let's just write it in, it was x1 equaled 0.5. Now that would be this value just here. Now what I'm going to do is I need to look in this vicinity of the graph and it's too small. So what I've done is just magnify this area. So let's take our first approximation 0.5 which was just slightly right of this intersection. So we'll just take it over here. So there's our 0.5. And what I did was we put 0.5 into this equation here. We worked out what a third of 0.5 cubed plus 1 came to. And we called that our second approximation, x2. It was 0.375 if you did that on your calculator. And what's happening is that our 0.5 was fed into the equation this equation here, which was y equals a third x cubed plus 1, and what we got back was this value over here. This was the 0.375. And what we did with that value is that we made this our new x value to get the third approximation. That's because this value, if we brought it back along here and then back down here, this became 0.375 because y was equal to the x value. Now with that 0.375, as I say, we put this back into this equation. So if we put it back in, we come all the way back up here till we hit this curve and it gave us a new value, the third approximation. And that third approximation, x3, turned out to be 0 0.3509 and so on. So this value here is 0 0.3509 and so on. And what do we do with that value? Well because y equaled x, we go back here, come down here. Now I haven't got much room here, but if you can imagine that that value in there is our 0.3509. It's 
it corresponds to the y value here because y equals x on the green line here. We took this value, put that value back into our equation, this side, and we got a new value for x. So if we come up here onto the curve across here, what do we get? Another value, x4. So hopefully you're starting to get the idea now. x4 turned out to be 0 0.3477 and so on. So we got this value here, 0 0.3477 and so on. We went back to y equals x and I hope you can see it's getting too hard now to keep writing in. But can you see this is starting to converge to this root here at this point? We eventually found out that after a few more iterations to two decimal places that x turned out to be 0.35 to two decimal places. So I hope that gives you some idea what's happening on the iteration. Now you may remember we put in another value of x into this as our first approximation. It was minus 2. And we found it didn't work. It diverged. It never converged to a particular root. And now you might be able to appreciate why that was so. Because when we put minus 2 in, minus 2 went in and gave us this result on the curve. If we go back to the y-axis, it was this value here. We put this value as our x value because we can come all the way back, hit the line here, the green line, find out our new value of x which was near minus 2.5. We put this value back in until we hit the curve again which was down here. And then we would get the corresponding y value and so on. Can you see it starts to move away from this root. So not everything's going to work as I pointed out. But I hope this has given you some idea of how iteration works. Why we make y equal x and why we have our other graph. And as I say you have your graph y equals x and you have your other curve and you're looking to see if your values can spiral in to your root. Alright? Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial.